briefly summarize your industry education, professional background, and current role at Innate. My current role at Innate is Chief Product Officer, so um, that's a role that I've been in uh, going on 30 years now, really going back to the uh, the beginnings of uh, one of the legacy companies that became part of Innate. So I've been on this uh, journey for a few decades now and uh, been in construction uh, really my whole life. Uh, uh, I mean, literally from the time I was born, my my family, most of my family's in construction and uh, grew up in uh, heavy civil construction and, uh, and and really got the the bug for uh, technology and the interest in technology. Um, like I said, about 30 years ago, that's kind of what took me down this path for that for, for that time. I've been involved in in uh, this journey that we now call innate um, focused on the on the construction technology side, specifically around uh, project controls for uh, construction. So how does innate fit within the infrastructure industry? Well, innate is, like I said, focused on, uh, on on project controls. We have an integrated project controls platform and and the goal of that platform is to provide really a, a data driven approach for the various stakeholders that are involved in construction projects. So uh, from the time that the project is conceived, um, typically by the owner operator, um, doing early stage you know, budgets, schedules, uh, defining scope, our, our system comes into play at that stage, um, all the way through funding approval, you know, project prioritization, and then ultimately into design, construction, uh, startup and commissioning, close out. So for the owner operators that are our customers, uh, our, our software kind of starts and ends in the context of a project or a program. So uh, they'll have obviously uh, business objectives or organizational objectives um, uh, that that drive uh, maintenance projects, new capital projects, um, and all of the stuff that goes into those in terms of planning them, working with uh, contractors to execute them, making sure that everything's been delivered per spec. Um, we've captured all of the uh, the as built documentation and drawings and models and all that kind of stuff um, leading into asset management. That's kind of where we we hand off kind of at the end over to, let's say an asset management system. So that's kind of from the owner operator's perspective. And then meanwhile, uh, a big chunk of our customers are on the contractor side. So the contractors are using our tools, same tools to collaborate with those owners um, and, and, and manage their work, manage their schedules, manage their work packs, manage procurement, um, manage subcontractors, manage progress, manage budgets, you know, so ba basically the Probably the best way to kind of boil it boil it all down is either from the owner or contractor's perspective is it's uh, it's about managing the three key aspects of project controls, which is scope, cost, and schedule. Um, and typically, we see uh, historically you, you might have 20, 30 different systems, a whole bunch of Excel spreadsheets, you know, that are that are kind of being used to manage those three dimensions of that triad. And uh, and so we replace all of that chaos with one. Uh, system that uh, that connects all the different business process, connects all the data, uh, connects the workflows, and just brings a lot of order to the process. How are the current deficiencies in water infrastructure different than problems in other forms of infrastructure? And how did get, how did it get this way? You, you know, there's there's probably more similarities than there are differences. You know, in, in general, as as I'm sure you know, uh, in, in in many parts of the world, particularly in the U.S., infrastructure in general is degrading. Uh, it's been underfunded. You know, it's 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 all over the news uh, in the U.S. Uh, relative to the passage of the the new Infrastructure Investment Act, uh, which is long overdue. But the you know the the infrastructure um, in in general, particularly again in the U.S., uh, if we focus just on that, uh, is in need of additional funding. And part of the issue is. Um, you, you know the, the the funding cycles and the approval cycles for uh, particularly something like water infrastructure. Those cycles are very arduous, right? I mean, the uh, uh, you know you have some triggers that are based on you know population growth, um, uh, construction fees. You know, so as housing, you know, more housing comes into play, that's contributing oftentimes to funding for new water infrastructure. But but it typically doesn't go far enough to deal with uh, maintenance and upgrades and uh, required you know regulatory changes to existing infrastructure and existing plants so you know you, you you see an industry that's you know that's sort of struggling just to keep up with growth and and oftentimes that 
prioritization shifts towards expansion to keep up with population growth, but it's not uh, adequate to keep up with the maintenance, the um, uh, upgrades of existing facilities to meet new requirements. So uh, that's that's a big challenge is, you know, how do we, much like the rest of the construction industry in general and infrastructure in particular, the challenge is how do we get, you know, how do we get more for our dollar and how do we stretch the, uh, the, the funds um, and, and use them, you know, most effectively the, the, with, with that sort of a, a funding shortage as a backdrop, it's critical that you, you work efficiently, you work productively to deliver these projects. You can't afford to uh, have overruns. You can't afford to do rework, right? You can't, I mean, you really have to uh, be on point for from a productivity and efficiency perspective. So how will technology shape and improve infrastructure in the near and long term? Well, I think that the, I think the tech does exactly that, right? It, it, it does help stretch those budgets further. So uh, it, it allows uh, organizations to get, you know, to get more uh, capacity, let's say, um, out of out of those uh, funding levels and um, and to deliver projects with more certainty. So that's that's a I think a, 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 another challenge in the industry that the that the technology like in eights can provide, and that's to uh, capture data. So as you're going through projects, you capture data in a consistent way, um, and 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 that becomes essentially a knowledge library, so that the next project you're planning that with more realism, right? You're planning that in a more risk adjusted way because that the software can apply things like machine learning look back at previous projects and data from those previous projects and surface oh here's here's some risks you may not have thought of uh here's some uh or perhaps some opportunities you know that you need to explore on this new project right and 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 all of that kind of creates this virtuous cycle of uh you know each project gets a little better and a little better so every time you do a project it's not you know we're starting over on the next one we're, we're leveraging all of those lessons learned in that in that history so you know that's that's certainly one way i think tech the, the technology is helping um, deal with that kind of overall funding uh, need to stretch that funding. Um, the other, I think, the other big area where where technology is certainly evolving is is in the area of digital twins. So, you know, the concept that uh, you know everything is everything is designed and engineered these days in, in 3D um, and 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 building information modeling and 3D models um, are being used in uh, more and more extensively now. It's not just sort of to represent the, you know, provide that visual context of the of the, you know, of the of the facility. It's uh, enabled you to go through and uh, connect data to that 3D model. So, for example, you know, as you're maybe you're in the uh, in the in the in the commissioning stage or the quality uh, stage of a project, you can tie all the activity that's going on. Here, we got to start up this equipment. We got to test this equipment. Uh, let's say it's a wastewater treatment plant. Uh, you can you can tie all that activity to those components in the 3D model, and and not only get the visual context that way, but then also track what actually happened in the context of that model. So if you imagine two years later, five years later, anybody can bring up that 3D model, click on you know any kind of uh, component in that 3D model and see oh when was that work delivered? Who did it? Who did the inspection? What's the warranty documentation on that, you know, uh, on that system, let's say, that's been installed? So it, it really, you know, creates this digital record, you know, that uh, the owner operator can use for the whole life of the project. I think that's another big way that the tech is evolving pretty rapidly in the in the in the infrastructure space. So how would you describe the infrastructure workforce? How is it changing and how can these workforce changes and challenges be met? In general, there is a uh, in, in construction, there is an I mean, let's face it. There's a labor shortage, right? So the the, the workforce is uh, is aging. The workforce is uh, not uh, attracting new uh, people into the uh, into the industry as rapidly as it needs to to keep up. <clears throat> and you know, because of that, uh, because of the nature of it, many are you know record numbers are going into retirement. So ha having uh, you know, again, kind of going back to how does the tech technology help with that problem while well, capturing that knowledge, capturing those lessons learned from projects. Basically, you know, it's a it's a knowledge transfer situation, right? So you've got the ability as you're trying to scale the organization, bring new people in to that workforce. They're not going to have 30 years of experience, right? So capturing all that experience from 
your experts, your experienced people in a, in, like I said, in a knowledge library it is one way to help uh, help deal with that issue, right? You can help get new people up to speed faster. They can be smarter planners because they can take advantage of all the work you know that came before them by more experienced people, um, and and just work more efficiently, right? Where you're not having to dig for information to help you figure out how should we plan this particular aspect of this new project. You've got all that information at your fingertips. So I think that's a you know, and that's true of. of really just about every industry, right? Where you're seeing that need to do that knowledge transfer, that need to get uh, new people on board uh, faster. Um, and that's just kind of a general, you know, general advantage of technology. I think uh, uh, NH technology is no no exception to that, right? We can really help with that, that challenge. So what are your thoughts on the new infrastructure law? How much do you think it can help? You know, there's a good chunk of, of funding in there, 55 billion, I think it is for uh, specifically for water infrastructure. So that's, that's certainly not uh, anything to sneeze at. I mean, to to a large degree, it's a continuation of uh, with slight expansion of, of funding, you know, mechanisms that were already in place. So uh, it includes, you know, some of the uh, or, or increases some of the state, uh, you know, revolving loan programs, which is a, another nice mechanism to fund some you know, expansion and, and maintenance uh, projects. So, uh, you know, it, it, the water infrastructure industry, I think, maybe has a bit of a PR problem, right? Because the it, it doesn't seem to get the, you know, the headlines that, you know, let's say alternative energy gets or even transportation, electric vehicles and things like that, and the power grid. Uh, those things seem to dominate the headlines, sometimes for bad reasons, right, when they don't work. <laughs> but, uh you know, water infrastructure, I think, is just one of those things people tend to take for granted a, a, a bit. Um, so it may not get the, you know, the, the sexy speeches on the floor of Congress, uh, you know, to, to solve those those challenges. But uh, uh, but no, I mean, the, the 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 new bill is great. I mean, it's you know, it's it's no doubt going to help. Um, and and even even you know sort of tying it back to technology, the new Infrastructure Investment Act includes you know specific grants in there for the use of technology. And and frankly, Nate's quite excited about the fact that uh, some of those technology grants are are specifically around the kind of things that Nate does um, relative to project management systems and project control systems. So you know that's that's probably the thing that we like the most about it uh, is that there is a recognition that hey we can. You know, we can we can we can work smarter as an industry and uh, and deliver projects with more certainty, uh, uh, stretch those budgets uh, even further, uh, just by by continually uh, or or I should say accelerating the use of technology inside the industry. So, what should our engineering audience be thinking about in their work in terms of technology and its adoption? What do they need to know that they may not know already? They probably know this already, but you know it, it may be one of those things where you you know you see it sort of incrementally and not realize the the massive shift happening. But that that move to an all digital process, um, you know, that people refer to as construction 4.0 or or uh, you know digital transformation, you know, was was underway. Um, you know, a few years ago, you could really see, like I said, I've been doing this for. Uh, for many years now, and you could definitely see that uptick happening um, starting a few years ago. Then the pandemic hit, and it just accelerated. Um, uh, you know, for for a few, uh, for a little bit of time, maybe a couple months, everyone was worried that oh, maybe work is just going to dry up, and nobody's going to feel like spending any money. But the reality is the the opposite happened, right? It was construction was, you know, generally treated as as, as essential. Uh, it was often used as a way to keep the economy going or, or grow jobs, right? So uh, funding for construction just continues to grow. Um, and, and and so, but now you have this, um, all all the issues that, that the pandemic brought along in terms of logis logistical challenges, restrictions on moving uh, people from project to project, what, you, what, what those people can actually, what do they have to do when they get to the job site, uh, you know, for pandemic mitigation type stuff. Um, and, and so, you know, the the industry recognizes the way technology can help with this, right? If we use an online system like NAIDS where we can collaborate easily no matter where people are, uh, we can make uh, plans that deal with those risks inherent in the supply chain, you know, that are that are coming about now. Um, so we can plan our procurement better. We can we can have contingency plans in place, easily share out those plans as they change, right? So the uncertainty that's kind of come about, you know, in the industry over the last couple of years, 
coupled with the, you know, the, just the growing economies and increased funding, I think that's created kind of a perfect storm for, uh, for, for this massive technology adoption, and, and we're seeing that. Um, so, I, you know, I think from, 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 from an engineer's perspective in, in the water infrastructure industry, I think, you know, you'll, you'll continue to see the expectation shift to, hey, we need to go from a, you know, siloed approach, you know, everybody's kind of doing their own things, maybe out in Excel spreadsheets, um, to a collaborative, all digital approach. And, and we've seen this already in other industries, right? You know, banking, healthcare, financial, uh, automotive, you know, they've already kind of gone through that shift. Um, construction is, you know, is unique in that there are multiple stakeholders, you know, and it's and it's a very uncontrolled environment, right, where these projects are being delivered. Um, so there's unique unique aspects due to the nature of construction, but that that shift to an all digital approach, um, and and you know, it's it's fully underway. Like I said, accelerating and and partially again driven by the owners who want to um, continue to evolve the digital record for that asset so it starts off in design we've got a model now as we're going through construction in the original build of that facility uh we're, we're adding to that digital model um with you know sort of as designed and as built you know data and documents and drawings and everything else that are right there inside the model now um, and then using that model to you know to do inspections ongoing inspections to do maintenance uh, throughout the life of that asset that's kind of becoming the expectation, right? That that uh, you know we we have all that information in our at our fingertips in the form of a digital twin, um, and not you know information spread all over the place in in a whole bunch of different systems uh, that somebody's got to go dig for. So I think that's probably the you know the big thing. Um, just if if you're not you know conscious of that digital transformation and thinking about how you, <clears throat> excuse me how your organization is going to participate in that. You know, you run the real risk of kind of being left behind. Um, and like I said, the combination of strong economies and and, and uh, specific funding, like the Infrastructure Investment Act, uh, is just is just accelerating that that move and that push. The move to you know online systems is not to be understated. You know, it used to be uh, sophisticated systems uh, like that, which NAID provides to uh, to to manage this. Uh, planning and execution of construction projects used to be a, a pretty you know major effort to implement those kind of systems so you, you'd have a lot of organizations were like hey this sounds like a great idea but you know we're too busy we don't have the, the resources to you know to kind of stand up our own hardware and get things installed and get everything ready to go um, now you know all of this is delivered via the cloud I mean it's you know the the, the time to get going on this kind of technology, I think some people might still perceive it as though it's a big effort, a big undertaking, um, and it's 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 become you know uh, quite the opposite. There's uh, you know the the vendors like an eight you know provides the technology, uh, uh, you know the organizations that want to take advantage of it. Really, all they have to do is log in, um, certainly you know define what their business process is going to be, how they're going to use the tools, and and an aid helps with that, but the the overall effort uh, and cost to get implemented with a system like this is a fraction of what it used to be, um, and that's uh, so that that's fortunately um, that's helping that uh, acceleration that I mentioned.